Hey everyone, Tactics here with another Dragonflight Alpha video, and in this one I'm going to be looking at the brand new Alderman Legacy of Tear dungeon and giving my first thoughts on it. I did this dungeon on Heroic difficulty, that is the only difficulty besides normal currently available on the Alpha, so it may be missing some mechanics, and of course it's a very early version, right, we're only in Alpha. Uh, but I will be giving my thoughts on how it currently looks, uh, maybe concerns, and just how the dungeon is kind of shaping up in general. I'll do that for, of course, for the other dungeon that's currently out in Altheris, and I'll be doing these as they release more uh, of these new Dragonflight dungeons on the Alpha slash Beta. So that said, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like it. And let's start out with the dungeon itself. So overall, it is a straight linear dungeon. There's very tight corridors. Uh, there's a lot of things like pillars and corners, which can be useful uh, in certain scenarios for things like uh, LOSing mobs or casts, grouping things together a little bit easier if there's a bunch of casters in a group. Uh, so that's helpful, but of course, it does come at the cost of maybe some of those camera angles uh, aren't so great, kind of like Sanguine Depths uh, in Shadowlands. Overall, though, uh, it's, it's, it's just a straight linear dungeon, which personally, I'm not a big fan of when it comes to transitioning that kind of dungeon into Mythic Plus. You're really just kind of w -keying through the dungeon here. Uh, you don't really have too much choice. Uh, it's also a very long dungeon. This is a five boss instance and it's it's gonna be a long one like we're talking dos levels of length maybe even longer uh so long dungeons also not the biggest fan when it comes to mythic plus they certainly have a place story wise uh but it's just it's a slog for sure if you have like a 50 minute uh mythic plus key so i'll have to see how all that stuff shapes out when we're looking at kind of like mob density of the dungeon it's actually relatively low there are not many big poles uh, there's also a decent amount of distance between packs in a lot of cases uh so there's, there's like a big pull at the end of the top of my head that i can think of with like a bunch of like whelps and dragons and stuff you can all pull together which is like kind of nice but outside of that it is kind of hard or there's like long distances between packs to kind of group things up so no big aoe blasting numbers in this dungeon one of my main problems i think with the dungeon right now is the checkpoint or kind of lack of checkpoints there's only one checkpoint in the entire dungeon right now and it's just before the fourth boss currently it's gated behind uh, either having high mining skill uh, of dragonflight or it has a big hp bar that you kind of dps down and it unlocks the kind of skip from the entrance all the way to this fourth boss uh but there definitely could be some some changes to that because right now like if you it's a five boss dungeon if you die just before the fourth boss or like around the third boss like on the third boss maybe even you're kind of uh in big big trouble because you have to run all the way from the beginning and like i said this is a long sprawling dungeon with a lot of empty space in it it's a long long run back so there definitely could be some uh some more checkpoints in here for sure that's my number one thing i think uh in this dungeon uh, overall if we're looking at the trash uh there's not too much to talk about at least on heroic there's a bunch of cleave attacks i noticed some slam attacks um but there are also quite a few packs which basically do nothing to anyone but the tank and they just slam your tank over 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 and over and over again so uh looking like there is a, going to be a bunch of pulls where you can just you know pull as much as your tank can kind of live and you're not really worried about like random damage or other mechanics kind of killing the rest of your party well there is of course some big aoe uh, goliaths in this dungeon later on uh, which you uh, could be scary for your party, but also LOSable. So we'll have to see how that turns out when it comes to the bosses. So five boss raid or dungeon rather completely linear. You do not have choice in the order you do these bosses. So you're always going to come up to the lost dwarves first. These three dwarf bosses, very similar to the original Alderman. Two of them are tankable. One of them is not. He just kind of jumps around does random damage. Not a shared health pool. So they're all individual uh, and they just kind of shoot random people you know there's like aoe's going out uh, occasionally they'll jump up into a boat and shoot a bunch of fire puddles everywhere which is pretty funny uh problem though melee of course not very friendly for you melee dpsers you can hit them when they're in the boat but you have to be like kind of right underneath their boat and move with them and you don't always have the space with all the puddles getting shot everywhere uh the main thing for this boss though is that whenever one of them reaches a low health threshold uh they will jump back into the boat become untargetable and just continuously shoot off those puddles until all three of the dwarves were defeated so probably what you're going to want to do is kill these guys relatively evenly so you have to deal with that consistent fire for a much shorter 
amount of time. Overall, generally, cool boss. It was really funny watching them jump up into the boat for the first time, but uh, definitely probably pain being a melee on this boss, especially on a higher tyrannical key when that lasts a long time and those puddles are kind of chilling there for a while. It's going to be rough. You're going to have very little space. Uh, moving on just a couple rooms over is Bromok. Uh, and another kind of not super melee friendly boss at first glance. He has a big like ground slam AOE around him. He spawns waves of adds. Some are casters, some are melee, just kind of group them up. Uh, he'll also give them a little buff. Uh, and to kind of get around the adds murdering you, uh, you have to destroy these quaking totems that he spawns and they'll stun everything around. It, it might have been a damage amp as well. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Uh, but you also want to hard focus these totems because they will just absolutely murder your party uh, the longer they're alive. So you don't want to a uh, nuke those t uh, totems down and then AOE the adds from there. There's also a bunch of pillars uh, and terrain in this room, which can be very, very useful. You can actually use them to kind of LOS all the adds into one spot and kind of force spawn the actual totem into a spot. And you can use that to your advantage to just get as much damage on that stuff as possible and group them up very, very nicely so LOS working in your favor in this case moving on into the new area of Alderman uh, specifically for this dungeon we have the third boss Sentinel Talondrus uh, and this is kind of an interesting boss so basically you need to stun him three times before he reaches max energy otherwise he gets like a 10-15 second buff on himself which makes him be uh, very very scary and will likely be an insta wipe on higher keys or keys in general honestly especially tyrannical keys uh, and basically how you can deal with these stuns is either player stuns do actually take a stack away, at least on heroic. Maybe this won't be a thing on mythic, but at least on heroic, they do. Uh, and also orbs. He'll, he'll spawn three orbs at a time on random players. A uh, little AOE around you. They'll activate after a couple seconds. And anyone, including the boss who touches it, gets stunned. So drag him through three of these. He will get stunned. Uh, if you drag him through one of these, stun him twice. He'll get stunned, that kind of thing. So any combination of those things will work. Of course, it's not that easy. He does do a knockback, uh, which will just knock everyone away. So you got to watch your positioning uh, so you don't get knocked into one of those uh, stun orbs, mines, whatever they're called. Uh, then we have Emberon. So this is the fourth boss here. And of course, the skip that I mentioned uh, or the uh, checkpoint, uh, if you want to call it some mole machine, basically, is just before this boss. And uh, that's good because this boss is going to be rough. This is for sure uh, out of both of the dungeons release. Uh, the hardest boss, I think, uh, especially going into thinking about how this boss is going to function on Tyrannical. Uh, it's a big HPS and DPS check, kind of alternates between a boss phase and an ad phase. And I believe those phase transitions are actually health percent based, which is actually very good for Mythic Plus scaling. Because that, of course, means like if it's a timer based, for example, uh, you know, on high Tyrannical, you're just going to have to deal with so many intermission phases. Percent based means it's consistent and no matter what high tyrannical, high fort, low fort, low tyrannical, you're dealing with the same number of phases. So you're not as uh, at as much of a disadvantage there. So if we talk about his boss phase, there's just him. He'll activate three golems. They're not going to be damageable or hit anyone or anything like that. They'll just continuously shoot out these fire orbs in random directions. They move relatively fast, actually. It was a little surprised. So you make sure you dodge those. Uh, there's going to be a frontal attack on the tank and then there's a fire debuff that goes on one player that explodes after a short amount of time so you want to just make sure you're uh, avoiding that at least i'm pretty sure you want to avoid that once you push him into the intermission phase the middle of the room kind of becomes unusable boss goes immune in there and those three golems that he activated become targetable and basically they just kind of channel into the boss and you need to kill them before you get killed because this boss is doing ramping fire damage uh this entire phase and of course there's this laser beam uh, cutting the room in half that spins around in a big circle. So pretty <laughs> pretty spooky fight. There's a ton of damage in that phase. It is it is going to be a tough one on Tyrannical for sure. Last up in this dungeon, we have Chrono Lord Deus, I think. Deus? Maybe. You know, who knows? Uh, dragon boss. Big infinite dragon flight dragon boss. Got a breath attack. No tail swipe on this dragon. And basically just kind of summons these sand puddles near random players uh, they'll grow over time which kind of limits your space and it, it actually grows quite quickly over the course of this fight so you'll see you actually run out of space quite quickly which i'm a little bit concerned about uh, we'll have to see how that works uh, especially there's definitely seems like there's a mechanic missing on this boss for sure so we'll have to see how mythic works uh, at full energy he'll start sucking up all this sand and if you step in it uh, you actually get a big haste buff uh, during this phase so very very good uh, outside of that it's just a little bit of knock uh, of a knockback in the dragon phase and he debuffs players 
as well overall not too complicated pretty straightforward dragon boss nothing too complicated about that but yeah that is alderman currently on the alpha overall i am a little bit concerned about some things uh, obviously i'm gonna hold judgment until i see uh what mythic kind of adds both the bosses and potentially the trash as well we really want to see how it overall functions but yeah currently main main issues is lack of checkpoints and of course the low mob density combined with the fact that it's a very linear dungeon and you aren't likely going to have a bunch of choice when it comes to what exactly you're pulling but that's it for this video of course i'll be posting my video on naltheris very soon as well and maybe this week we'll get another uh, round of new dungeons to test out of course i'll be putting out my weekly roundup on that uh, when we get the alpha build later this week otherwise guys have a good one Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.